Hello, how's it going? Today we're doing Bumblebee from Hack the Box, which is another Sherlock's machine, and this time it's an easy machine. It focuses on reviewing a website log file and database, and doesn't require any specialist forensic tools to answer. So jumping straight in, we've got the scenario here, which is that an external contractor has accessed the internal forum at Forella via the guest Wi-Fi, and they appear to have stolen credentials for the administrator user. We've got the logs and the full database dump of the forum. So we've got the SQLite and the access logs. Having a look at the access logs, we've got uh, an IP address, presumably where the request was made from, a date, what the request was, get slash, uh, this will be the response code, uh, probably response size, and then we've got the user agent header. So there's a fair bit of information we could possibly find in here. And then we've also got the database here, which we will pass through using WSL, just because it's something I'm more familiar with. And we'll be using the SQLite binary. And to begin with, I'm probably gonna jump in to look at the users, so Let's do a schema on this users table. And we're probably interested in, we'll grab user ID, username, and user email, I guess. So I'll do a select username, uh, user ID, username, and user email from this all right looks like there's a fair few but not many of them have email addresses against them so let me just sort by where user email does not equal nothing okay there we go we've got four users with emails and um, the obvious one that stands out here is contractor.net so I would assume it's either it's going to be a pool one of these a pool accounts I guess I could confirm which one of these were used or active um, I could just have a look at what posts were made which is something that I'm going to want to do at some point anyway so if I go back to what's in the database uh, here we go, we've got the posts. So I will do a schema on posts. And I want to grab the post ID, the poster ID. Uh, I'll just do that and see how big this is going to be. So I'll select post ID poster ID from and it looks like there's only three posts by users 52 50 and 2 which if we go back up 52 is a pool 1 2 is admin and I'm not sure who 50 is R savage so we can be pretty confident that it's a pool one is the answer for the contractor name. Given there are only three posts, I'll look at exactly what those are now. So I want the uh, post text where post ID equals two. Good afternoon, new to the administration team. This is Randy. So Randy is uh, the admin account. And then we'll look at the first one, which is a sample post, nothing too interesting in there. And then we can look at post nine. And this looks like Looks like a mixture of um, HTML and some JavaScript. I'll grab this while I've got it open and I'm going to save this separately. 
might just save it. Um, in Bumblebee, and I'll call it post.html, and we should be able to open that up as well. So we can have a look at that in more detail. But the next task is what IP address did the contractor use to create their account? If we go back to the tables and have a look again at the users, uh, I would imagine that the user IP value is associated with the IP address that the account was set up with. So based on that assumption, we can select user IP from where user ID equals 52 and we have 1010078. Task three is what is the post ID of the malicious post that the contractor made? Um, so the post that we see here uh, if you recall was done by user 52 and it's post ID number 9 and then there's a question about what is the full URI that the credential stealer sends its data to so at this point um, I mean I'm fairly suspicious of this post uh, and it's probably about time to have a more detailed look at that HTML okay so I'll open up the post.html I can't scroll so I'll just zoom out a little bit we can see that it's got a whole bunch of links and then there's a message here saying session timeout your tokens timed out in order to proceed you must log in again however when we look at the login button let's bring up our developer tools and inspect the login fields uh, and here we go we've got the form information and the action on filling out the form is to send a post request to this address here which would make sense which is the um, IP address of the contractor and so that's most likely some sort of credential stealer that's the answer to task 4 we want to have a look at the access logs and see who else has been accessing the forum. So I'm just going to cat the access logs um, just so we've got a reminder of how that's uh, organized. And then what we want to do is remove all of the lines that begin with the IP address of the contractor, which is 10.10.0.78. Okay. And then we're going to, uh, we're interested in, we're interested in the um, the different IP addresses. So I'll just print the first, first column and then I want to sort and uh, get a count for how many unique, oops, I forgot to close off the quotes there we go so other than the attacker we've got 456 um, hits in the access logs against 1010 or 10 255 254 2 and a local host now we've done that let's try and get a feel for how the users on that IP address have been accessing the forum and so I'm going to include a print on field six and field seven which is going to include the uri okay so just a quick browse through here we can see that there was definitely some posts to a slash admin index.php we can see that post two was viewed in the forum ucp was accessed app.php was accessed quite a few times posts one and two seem to be referenced there so just based on that activity i'm 
a little bit suspicious that this would be the administrator user coming from this IP address. Um, and just given the fact that they were only two users, it's really only either going to be the admin or the Randy user. So one of the questions is about the administrator's user agent. We'll just start from scratch. I'll do the access log and then we can grep directly for the IP address that we now know, which is 10, 255, 254, 2. Actually, we could confirm that IP address in the database as well. It was IP2. Yeah, there we go. So the IP address that the admin account was set up with was the same, 255.254.2. So we'll do a another awk. We'll set this field separator once again as a quote mark. And then we'll print, I think it is five. Oh, I think I've grabbed the wrong one. Maybe it's six. Yep, there we go. And then I'll just do a sort and a unique, whoops, unique dash C. And the only user agent that seems to have been connecting to the forum from the IP address that's associated with admin is this one. And so we can plug that in as the answer to task seven. So the final questions that I think we can answer from inside the access logs are nine and 10. And that's relating to a database backup, um, which must have been dumped. So the simple way of doing this is to just um, grep for backup on the access log. And sure enough, there is a backup reference, including a post and action download. And so we can work it out from this. The way I actually found it though, um, was by parsing through the access log. I wanted to look for the attacker's IP address. So I wanted to grep for the line starting with uh, 1010 078. And then I grepped for any time that the attacker, whoops, any time that the attacker accessed a slash ADM, which I assumed was an admin um, endpoint. So I did a grep for ADM index.php. I scrolled up to look at the earliest interactions here, and they started around uh, 1153 on the 26th of April. And so we can sort of walk through and follow the activity that, that happened. Um, so nothing super interesting going on here. It looks like there's some management of groups happening. So this is likely where they're adding themselves to the administrator group, for example. It looks like there's accessing uh, logs. There's something to do with languages. And then if I keep scrolling down, we eventually see reference to backup, ACP database mode backup. And so to investigate this further, I, um, I just went back to the raw logs and honed in around that time of uh, right on midday on the 26th. And it turns out that's pretty much the end of where the logs are. But um, we can see that the next requests which come from this IP address are the store backup. And we've got a file size there of 34707. So we should be able to answer the, what time did the contractor download the database backup? And that would be the time of this request here, which is 26th of April at 12.01.52. And I'll put that in there for the time being, but uh, that turns out to be incorrect. So um, we'll come back to that in a minute. And then what was the size of the database? And um, that would be the size of the response to this request, which was 34707. And that is the correct answer for number 10. I'll just highlight this in red. I actually grabbed the wrong time. I grabbed this one, but what I wanted was 
this one where they've actually downloaded the um, the backup and then I'm going to grab this timestamp and that is the correct timestamp however it requests it um, it requests it in UTC and we can see that the time zone is plus one so it actually occurred at 11.01.38 and that's the correct answer. So the final two questions we can answer from the database, three questions, sorry. Um, when did the contractor log into the forum as the administrator? In the forum there are plain text credentials for LDAP and what time did the contractor add themselves to the administrator group? Okay, back inside the SQL database. Um, let's have a look at what we've got again. Uh, probably want to have a look at this. So I'll do a schema and we're going to want group ID and group name. So select group ID group name from groups. All right, so administrators group is number five. And we will look at, uh, I think there's a log. There is, so we'll check out the log and see whether we've got the group change registered. All right, we can see that the user a pool gets created and we can see a admin auth success and user added to administrators a pool and the database backup also takes place it looks like the time is registered in epoch time though so we'll just need to convert that And we have April 26 at 10.53 and 51, which is the correct answer. This just needs to be put into the correct format. So I think it's 26.04.2023 and then 10.53.51. We can also answer from this when they first logged in as administrator. And that was at 10.53 and 12. So it looks like they logged in as admin with the credentials that were stolen from the malicious post. Then they added themselves to the administrator group and downloaded the forum backup. So I'll add that time and it was the same date. And the final question is in the forum, there are plain text credentials for the LDAP connection. What is the password? Uh, and to answer this we need to go to this configuration and uh, I'll do a schema on config looks pretty simple I'll just dump it oh, I might just uh, jump back in and try that again select star from there we go and if we scroll up we can see the LDAP information, including the LDAP password, which is the answer there. So that'll about do it for Bumblebee. It was a nice, easy machine and mostly practicing some basic SQLite enumeration and bash command line parsing of log files, which are always good things to practice. Um, in any case, I hope you enjoyed and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.